Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Dan Jackson, aka Danzy Engineer. If you watched my previous video, you would have seen that I've set up a new fire alarm and electrical contracting company. To be more specific, it's more about fire safety compliance. But what I want to do, and what I said in the last video, is that I want to completely take you on my journey from setting up the company and to uh, give you updates as I go. So this is sort of an update video of what I've been doing in the last two weeks. In the previous video, I kind of told you about my company, New Terra Compliance, gave you some information about branding, what I'll be doing, like my services, what I'm sort of focusing on at the beginning. And um, that was two weeks ago, and my God, I've been so, so busy. So my time is spent, a lot, of, a lot of it is spent on sort of building the foundations of my business. There's a lot to do, a lot of paperwork-wise, especially with the type of work I wanna do. But also I have been out on site, so I've been visiting clients, I've been quoting work, doing surveys, tenders and what have you, but doing the odd sort of job here and there. So we've been doing some fire alarm maintenance and um, some call outs. And it's been, it's been interesting. Um, I haven't been on the tools in quite some time, so that's a bit of a change. But I, I enjoy it. Now the reason I'm going out on the tools is one, because when you start up, if you have to do that, you have to do that. And obviously a lot of people will start as a one man band and then they'll sort of grow. Now I haven't got loads of projects ready to rock and roll that I can start on from day dot to employ a load of guys. Now I have got people working for me. So we're doing a lot of electrical testing and repairs. So I've got a team of guys in London who are doing that currently. Um, so I have got a contract in. However, there's always gonna be stages where you have to take steps and for me, I also want to get a little bit more on the tools. Not all the time, but it's because I don't feel you can gain much respect from peers and people who are doing the work day in, day out when you're not doing it yourself as such. Because when you when you're you become a bit of a pencil pusher like myself, and I have you know been in management for quite some time, you do lose a little bit. You do lose a little bit. I mean, some people completely lose it. The the practical element. And I just want to make sure that when I'm growing my new team, I've, I've got the mutual respect there. I, I understand what they're doing, they understand me. Now, I've said in my previous video, how I do things is I like to know snippets of different aspects of business, whether it's marketing, whether it's, te you know, well, technical, I'm pretty hot on anyway, but um, uh, it could be uh, finance, it could be HR. I like to know snippets and anything that I don't know fully and isn't my strong point, I then outsource and pay somebody to do it. I see that as an investment. So, this video, we're gonna be talking about networking, marketing, BAFE accreditation, subcontracting, health and safety, and certification software. So these are the topics that I've been sort of working on in the last two weeks. And of course, if, if you've got anything to say during this video, any questions or any input, because you know I'm, I'm always gonna be learning from other people as well, please put in the comments. So I would argue that networking is possibly the most important aspect of growing a business and maintaining a business. I think it's really, really important. You could be the best electrician, the best fire alarm engineer in the world, and know nobody, but you could also be a really crap electrician, engineer, and know loads of people. Guess who gets the work? The one who knows people because they know what he's doing. Now, what I like to do is become both, right? I always strive to be the best I possibly can. I know I, I'm always gonna be making improvements. Um, I never wanna be complacent, you know, so you have gotta be self-aware, but networking, and reaching out to people is something that I've mastered um, for a long time. And I'm quite fortunate because I do know a lot of people, a lot of people know me, but I've got to be proactive about it. You know, the whole purpose of marketing is all about letting people know what you're doing, okay, and reaching out. So with the business networking side of things, I use LinkedIn a lot. So um, it's just a case of letting people know what I do. People will come to me and chat to me and it might be someone who's obviously interested in my services. It might be someone who 
has something to offer me. So it could be suppliers. When you first start out, like let's say you've just got into the industry and you want to set up your own company, obviously that can be very, very difficult, but you have to build up your reputation. I've managed to do that over time. So I've already done that journey, but it's about being, you know, getting that professional status, I guess, of, of what you do and what you offer. So I've come back in, I've just gone, hello, I'm back. You know, I can now do this, blah, blah, blah. And people obviously come into me for works. Now, if you're starting out, you need to kind of really do the groundwork because I've, I've been in this game for 15 years, okay? So I've, I've got 15 years of this. And even when I was an apprentice, I was always making connections and stuff like that. Now, obviously marketing, I've been focusing on a lot of marketing. Now, what I am doing, I have got a website. It is in its basic element. I'm getting a freelancer to sort of work on that as we speak. So, you know, what I say is you haven't got to start with the perfect product. It's something you can adapt. Now, the website... I, I honestly say everybody needs to invest into a website that you can manage and that you can change and alter as you go. It's important that you own it and it's not completely in control of somebody else. Now, again, I'm fortunate that I have that snippet of information to know about WordPress and know about websites. I know that. So if something goes wrong, usually I can resolve it and obviously I pay other people to do stuff. But with my website, I'll be doing some blog posts and it could be particular topics. And the idea is, is to gain gain the attention through, you know, you can share blog posts on social media, but also it's keywords in those blog posts. So if I put something like Fire Alarms Essex, you know, something like that, and that was a keyword, when people are Google searching and whatever else, it might be something that pops up. Now, not specifically that, that sentence, but it could be anything that you're looking to get traffic to your website. So I use sort of blog posts and also it's to show people what you do. I've got one coming up on aspirating smoke detection as well. It's something that I offer as a service. So there'll be a blog post coming out about it. And you can also, you know, email your existing client list and it's about keeping your face in their face. So it's about brand awareness as well because you're constantly reminding people who you are. So when people are like, you know, oh, I've got budget to spend and we need to, you know, what are we gonna spend it on? And it's like, you're at the forefront of their mind all the time. I do a lot on social media for marketing and it's just to let people know what I'm doing. And I try and, I try and put a positive spin on it, although sometimes I can't help but when I find a load of crap work, I can't help but, you know, highlight that. It's something I've always done, but I have a bit of an ethos that if you present a problem, you've got to present a solution. So quite often when I post on social media, I'll say, this is what I found, but this is what we've done. And the client is actually, you know, they're willing and, and you know, they're going to pay for that. So it's about, you know, that positive spin because I want to show people what I'm about. We're in this day and age where you can search anybody. And if you're new, you're a new company, you want people to know stuff about you. If you search my name, Dan Jackson, aka Dan C Engineer, Google it now. There's loads of stuff that will come on the internet. I've done podcasts. I've done um, I've done, I've presented, I'm part of um, various different groups, that it's all public forums, you know, you search my name, you can find out about me and it puts trust in people. We need to gain the trust of our clients and people we're dealing with, our network. So again, I touched on my brand last time, New Terror Compliance. I've had some videos made that are quite impactful, you know, they're quite you know, visual, but also, it's all about merchandise and stuff. So people recognize that logo and I go absolutely mad for branding, absolutely mad. And there's a few little ideas um, which I'll be doing, but for example, when we put labels on fuse boards, you can have them with your logo, make it nice and obvious there. So people are constantly reminded of you are that company. Now I had a oven cleaning company come into my home, uh, God, it was years ago, it's clean my oven. I got, got hold of, I think it was a recommendation or something like that. Use this guy, he was fantastic. He's really good, really good value for price. He gave me a paper invoice and now I can't find that guy, right? I can't remember his name. I can't remember his company. I can't remember even the person who gave me the recommendation. So now I can't use that guy. However, as an electrical company or fire alarm company, if you're constantly putting your brand in their face and obviously not overdoing it, but on the fuse board, you've got your label, um, you dish out things like, I've seen people do magnets, fridge magnets. It's all about that branding. I'll get some loop fobs made up, some little key rings, which I've always done. They are quite pricey for what they are, but people use them all the time. Now, something which the people on Twitter do is something called sticker swap, which is a bit of a marketing genius, really, because what people do is they have their logo stamped on and you swap stickers. So you might have stickers made and you send it to somebody else. Now, you might think that's really sad, 
But when you've got people posting on social media, your brand and pushing it in people's faces all the time, it's, all it is is brand awareness. I've got some on the way, but I was sent some by Hit The Lights podcast. Okay, so Gary, I've, I've really liked Gary actually. He's got his podcast, he does some sticker swaps. And obviously now I'm posting that to you to say, you know, this is his brand. I'm, I'm doing a brand awareness for him and all he's done is sent me some stickers. And you might argue, you know, how does that get you work? Because obviously on Twitter, you know, is it clients? But no, it's networking with peers. And for me, I actually work with electricians because I will design a fire alarm system. They'll install it, I'll commission it and hold their hand throughout the whole process. So for me, you know, I want people to know that if you need a fire alarm installing, Dan is the person to come to. Okay, so it's all about putting that brand in people's faces. So I'm very, very strong on marketing. But to get some of these stickers made, they're, they're not expensive for what they are. But things like, you know, your next test labels, your uh, mixed wiring colors, your RCD test labels and stuff like that, you can have them all branded. It's completely, you know, up to you. Obviously, like um, your work uniform and stuff like that. I have ordered mine, but it's taken me a long time to find the right people who I want. So I will be revealing that at some point, but again, it's about that brand, seeing the brand all the time. When you get a vehicle, brand the absolute hell out of it. It's, a, it's an advertising platform. I know some people are put off with vehicles because it basically advertises that you've got tools in there. I do understand that, and that's something you do have to weigh up. Another thing I've done with um, sort of uh, branding is my business cards. Now, these are high quality, and they look the absolute nuts. I'm, I've got my, my face on there, I've got the company logo. I'm not gonna give you the QR code because so it's gonna give you my direct details. Um, if you want me, you have to get hold of me through other ways. But I've got all the information on there and they, they really do stand out and people have given me some absolutely fantastic feedback on these. And obviously when I go and see clients, I can leave them. I've got a QR code for coronavirus so people can scan it. But specifically, I've put my face on there so people can relate the company to my face, they need to see my face, okay? Because I find as I've got older, I can remember faces, but I don't remember names. So that's why I've done that. But also what I've done on social media is posted them online to say, what do you reckon? What do you think about this? People have given me feedback and I've actually made some changes. Lee Ward from Pure Electric actually told me that the way I've done uh, written EngTech in all capitals, rightly so, it should actually be uh, part lower and part upper case. And he said, you might want to change that because does it look professional? Thank you very much. He's given me some input and I've made that change. So, you know, getting people involved, but now obviously he and other people are going to remember the brand and stuff like that because I've, I've got people involved and it's something that you can do as well. It's all brand awareness. Right, so one of the biggest things I've been doing the last couple of weeks is obtaining BAFE accreditation for fire alarms. So BAFE is a scheme and you are audited by a third party company to make sure that you're working to that scheme. If you don't know about the scheme, um, people compare it to like, you know, NAPI or NICIC, it's totally different because it's a, it's a written document that you have to prove your work into. And in the fire alarm world, it's, it's, it's quite standard to have, that you don't have to have it, but there's some companies that request it and require it. Now for me, it's completely important that I have it because the type of clients I'm going for will specify it. It's the same as if somebody specifies that you're NIC, EIC registered. If you're not, you won't get the work. So for me, it's totally vital. Now I actually find the scheme requirements quite basic and straightforward simply because since I've come back to the UK, I've been consulting and a lot of that is helping companies get BAFE accredited. So I know this scheme, I've got all the documents, I know um, exactly how it works, what you're supposed to be doing. So I know it very well. So for me, it was a dollar. It's just a case of obviously getting the install, showing them what you've got, what you're doing. Um, and I've, I got BAFE accreditations very, very quickly. Now, if you want to know more about uh, this video, I mean, I could talk about the BAFE scheme forever, trust me. Um, it's something I really like. So if you want to know more, please put in the comments below. And I, if you want me to do a specific video on the BAFE accreditation, I can do that, that's no problem. I have been out working, okay, but obviously we're in coronavirus territory right now, as we know, and things are a little bit, you know, there's still some people are still locked down. We've got some, the social distancing stuff and on sites that we're working at. Some people aren't comfortable with you working in their home. So we've got all these things to play with. now. I am fortunate that 
I'm not relying on a wage from this right now to come in. You know, I've, I've got passive income in other ways that allows me, and I don't have an extravagant lifestyle at all. So in terms of like financing my life, it's, it's all taken care of. I'm very fortunate in that capacity. And I know a lot of people who start out, it is a massive strain because they're relying on the money you get in to obviously pay for bills and wages and stuff like that. So it is difficult, I do get it. And I did touch on in my previous video about some things that you can do to help you know, finance at the beginning, but you need cash in the bank. So as you'll know, if you start up a company, a lot goes out, but not a lot comes in unless you've got lots of projects in the beginning. So you have to be a bit sure on how you're gonna finance your life. So one thing that I kind of say to a lot of people that start out is that you can, you can subcontract to other companies, like reach out, um, when you're subcontracting, you don't get as much money as such, but it's still money. Now, I don't recommend doing this permanently unless that's the type of thing that you want to do because essentially it's somebody else getting a work in. You just turn, you're a man in a van, essentially. So that might be what you want to do. But if you want to have your own business and grow it, then you don't want to be subcontracting to other companies forever. Um, obviously, you can do a bit of both. But I have been actually subcontracting just to get my foot in the door a little bit more. And um, it's just something to sort of think about. Like I said, the money is never gonna be exactly what you want. And that's why I focus on the stuff that is high profit. It's not about turnover, it's about profit. So for me, like I, I specifically focus on clients and, and jobs that are gonna be pay, paying a decent money. Now, obviously there's a lot of people doing private rented sector EICRs, and what a farce that is. If it's a farce, please let me know in the comments below because I mean, I've been, pri I, I give some litting agents my, my fees and I've got a blanket fee. And um, there's electricians doing electrical testing on properties, no matter what the size is for like 50 quid. <laughs> like I, I don't even want to entertain that stuff. So I go, that ain't my market, see you later. Um, which is a shame, but you know, it's what it is. I'm not going to waste my time concentrating, trying to lower what I'm worth to other people who are doing stuff for 50 grid. No. So I concentrate on the higher profit jobs and a lot of stuff what I do is like, you know, fire alarm commissioning. So companies might come to me and it's about being sort of adaptable. But just have a think about subcontracting in the beginning um, and because it, it might work for you. When I started my old company, we subcontracted to facilities companies um, for a good three years and we're talking vast amount of work and the profits weren't great, but they it was still something to get, to get going, to get the ball rolling. So it's something to sort of consider. Now, something I didn't mention in my last video, which I was sort of working on and it's really important is the health and safety aspect. So if you're working in people's homes as such, you are subject to health and safety legislation. But I've actually signed up to some software called HS Direct. It is quite a lot of money, but it, it makes method statements and risk assessments quite easy to produce. And that's kind of what I wanted it for. There are different things out there. This is just what I've tried because it was recommended to me. I will play with it more and more and let you know how it goes. But I will be, I will be getting a consultant on board who I pay an annual fee and there's someone I'm talking, somebody I know, and he'll guide me with health and safety matters because I am responsible as the director of the company, but there's some things I'm not 100% clued up on, so I need external help. And this is, you know, if you need help with stuff, you need to go to somebody who is competent to show your competence as, a, as an organization. So it's something that, you know, you might have to do. And these days, even if you're working for like letting agents and stuff, you'll, you'll more than likely have to produce your health and safety policy and give risk assessments and stuff like that. So this is all, all part of it. It's all part of it. So that's something, you know, that I'll sort of talk about another time when I get a bit more involved, but it's all part of being a contractor. Health and safety matters are really important. And the final thing I want to talk about is uh, certification software. I've been humming and hiring for so long. And I know people are going to put in their comments about, you know, the, the software that they use and recommend. And I've, I've played with so many. The one I used to use was Click Software. Not the, not the NIC online version, because that was crap. But the actual, um, it's branded as the NIC EIC software, but it's made by Click. I found it quite quite good, but apparently when I had the 18th edition, they weren't quite ready and, and whatever else. So 
you know, I, I haven't really given it a go now, but I've been looking at Vespula and Electroform. Now, I love Electroform in terms of their customer service is bang on. Their forms are detailed, they're really good, and I love the format that you can present to the client. It looks really professional. They've absolutely nailed it. What I don't like about it is that it's online only. So you can't work offline, which to me is a problem because I want to be able to produce the certification there and then. I don't want to write it down and then come home and having to do it again. I want to do it there and then. So it's done, dusted. So the job is completed only when the paperwork is completed. And I want that to be by the time I leave site. So I make sure I've got all the paperwork sent off to the client by the time I leave site most of the time, unless there needs to be some, you know, whatever adjustments. So that's my slight issue of that. Um, it's one pound a certificate, which is affordable. Now, if you're bashing out a thousand certificates a week, obviously it's not going to be affordable, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll do bulk, bulk buys and stuff like that. Vespula, I do like, I just, it's a bit clunky for me. It's a bit, the format and how it looks, I'm, I'm all about how you present the paperwork to the client. Now, what I love about it is when you're doing an EICI, you can upload photos. Um, you can, there's a lot of detail in it, similar to Electroform, but the format just doesn't, I just don't click with it too well. And But I'm torn, I'm really, really torn because I wanna choose something that, that just obviously works and does the job and it's uniform for the company. So I'm in a little bit of uh, to and fro with that currently. But for fire, I actually create my own certificates and they're all on Excel, so I can do what the hell I want with them. And I adopt them because a lot of the fire certificates out there, I don't know a single bit of software, fire software, you let me know, right? A single bit of fire software out there that has decent reports and certificates. Um, I've never seen one. I think they're crap. So I create my own because I want to give detail to the client, detail of what I'm doing, but also use it as almost like an asset form to see what's there and what we need to do so I can quote from it quite easily. And obviously it's, it's documentation and I'm, I'm really all about the detail in a documentation to cover your backside as you know the co contractor. So yeah, really torn with that one. So that's gonna conclude this video. I just wanted to give um, an update. I am testing, um, it was put back, but I am testing a smoke alarm in a landlord's property and, I, and I've got permission to film. And um, I wanted, it's, it's an interesting one because I have looked at it so I'm gonna be doing videos on stuff like that, but if you want me to cover anything, please let me know. And of course, I'm gonna be updating things, but updating you guys as I go um, with how I'm getting on with my business. Like I said, I'm quite raw with stuff. So if things are a problem, I'll tell you. If things are going good, I'll tell you. And it's about, you know, I want people to come on that, that journey with me, you know, if you're if you're a business owner, and also anybody who's got input for me, like please, I'm, I'm all for learning. So yeah, anyway, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.